Now let's look at this word gathering. It's there a number of times, and let's interpret the word gathering. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are going out each day and gather enough. The people go out each day and gather enough for that day, not too much. In this way, I will test them, okay, test them and see whether they are or will follow my instructions. Will they make good on my trust? The trust of a day of rest would be a test for them. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So what's the idea of gathering anyway, and whose idea was it? Well, it was God himself that uh, came up with the idea of gathering. Now I ask the question, you know, what is the equivalent of gathering for us today? It became a way of getting their food. In our modern society, not everybody farms. And you could say harvesting is a way of gathering in the world. But uh, any number of people go to work in factories and stores, travel about as businessmen and women and so forth. So gathering becomes a way of working for your food. And someone then pays you, you then go to the store, to the market, and you get what food you need for that given period of time. And so your work becomes a form of gathering, gathering. So uh, the equivalent of gathering in a modern time beyond agriculture and farming, uh, it, it's a word for work. Gathering is a word for job whereby we earn an, a, a wage, an income. Uh, gathering is a word for occupation or ministry. Some of us have ministries by which we're paid by a church or another organization as such. And so people uh, allow us then to work in such a way in ministry that they pay us and therefore we gather by our work uh, in the calling of the Lord. When does gathering go wrong, okay? When does gathering go wrong? It goes wrong in a number of ways when we can't stop or won't stop gathering. And you see that some people were just that. Nevertheless, verse 27, some of the people went out on the seventh day to, day to gather it, but they found none. There was none to be gathered, but they went out there on habit. And that seemed to disturb the Lord. It seemed to anger the Lord. And he said to Moses, you know, when are they going to get it? When are they going to understand? Six days you are to gather, not on the seventh day are you to gather. How long will you refuse to keep my commandments? Uh, God said to Moses in instruction to the people. Uh, the Lord has given you given you a gift so you don't have to work on this seventh day. But yet you can't stop. You're obsessed with gathering day in and day out. And we can be that way as well. We can think that we're pleasing God by being diligent, ambitious uh, day after day of going out and working. And I realize the word ambition has different meanings to different people. In my country, America, ambition is seen as a positive thing because one doesn't want to be known as lazy. One who is ambition is a positive in that they're going to take use or make use of the opportunities they have to go to school, to get a job and so forth, versus waiting for other people to feed them and get things done for them. But the word ambition can be very negative, and in some countries I understand, like Russia, it is a more negative thing. It's taking advantage of other people. Uh, this word ambition, uh, in our understanding from the West, is a more positive, but it has a negative as well, where you take advantage of people, where you uh, push them aside, and you uh, use ill gain to get ahead of others and promote yourself. But anyway, people don't want to be known as lazy, so they keep working and working, and their work gets out of control, and they don't know how to stop. That's where gathering goes wrong, where you don't have breaks. And somewhat the same uh, uh, concept that I was talking about in the concept or talk about closure, 
uh, in a previous session. So gathering goes wrong where we won't or we can't stop gathering. Why do we gather more than we need? Maybe a number of reasons, uh, one being for greed. The overly ambitious, negatively ambitious person, their greed, they want it all. It's not enough for them to simply do their best, but they want to be the best, the greatest in everything, and they'll stop at nothing to promote themselves above and beyond and before other people. Greed. Uh, they want to take more than their share. And God had devised a way that it would rot on them. It would not be good to eat after a period of time more than one day. Another reason may be fear. Many people in our country grew up in, during what was known as the Great Depression. And I know the world experienced the Great Depression at the same time in the 1930s. And people like my father were afraid of ever being poor ag again, of ever being so poor that out of fear they kept working and working. And, and we then developed as a society many workaholics who out of fear kept uh, storing up and gathering more and more lest they uh, be uh, poor as they used to be at one point in, in their childhood or their life. And it may be also a lack of trust. They don't trust God and God's mathematics that six days of work are good enough to live on. You don't need that seventh day because God is trusting you with it and giving you a time to worship Him to enjoy that Sabbath, to enjoy that holy segment of time. Now, if we find that word, you know, trust coming up again and again. Sabbath is a weekly test of our trust in God. God gives us a test every week. Will we go on gathering, on working? And we may think uh, very proudly that I work seven days a week and uh, I am so uh, good at working good at my work and I am so necessary. And in a ministry, if you're a pastor or a servant in a church, you might say, well, there are so many lost people, I work seven days a week to bring them to Christ. And what could be wrong with that? What could be innocent or, or bad about that? That must be an innocent, innocent desire to want to bring people to Christ seven days a week. Well, obviously, if someone get, comes to your door and is wanting to come to Christ on that day of rest, you probably will see that person or see them as soon as you can. But if God says, I want you to be holy by stopping and resting, I want you to trust me that I will provide for your needs for a full seven days and you only need to work six days, then it's a test of trust. And uh, we must learn to trust God in these measurable ways. Again, without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Apostle Paul quotes Exodus chapter 16, verse 8 in 2 Corinthians 8, 15. As it is written, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. And he's talking about giving to the Corinthian church. And there were people in the church that were uh, hoarding, holding back, and they were not sharing with others in the city of Jerusalem and other places as he came to collect from the Corinthian Christians. And they had wealth and they hung on to it tightly. And he said, you can gather much, you can gather much, but you won't have any great amount. You won't have too much if you gather much. And if you gather little, you won't have too little. God works this out, and this concept comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 18. So he quotes it. It's universal. When does gathering go wrong? We ask this question again. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. Well, gathering goes wrong when we gather again. I'm repeating myself for emphasis. When we gather more than we need. 
and we don't have the ability to stop. Our gathering, our working is out of control. And there's this Sabbath principle. I call it God's math. Set aside one day out of the seven for God's pleasure. Remember, He enjoys you when you rest. And He will make six days of work as good as seven. Do you believe that? Think of that. Do you trust God to give you a day of rest so that you don't have to work seven days constantly? Many people don't trust God. Many believers don't trust God. They believe it's all up to them, that God won't work this miracle in some cases of stretching six days into seven days of provision. Bear in mind that the Lord has given you, it's a gift, the Sabbath, rest. That is why on the sixth day He gives you bread for two days. God's math. When it comes to work, six is more than seven. And you'll be happier and healthier working six days and not seven days. And besides, you will have opportunity to change and be transformed as you make use of that one day, if at all possible, unless you are a slave, unless you have no choice at all. You are to make a good living. Are you making good on God's trust by trusting Him to provide through lean times, through illness and tragedy, or through waves of work that threaten to tow you under? Uh, times when we're very stressed and work is great, but are you trusting God through those times that He will get you through it? Is that trust expressed through an ability to cease gathering for yourself? and for others. Is your trust demonstrated in acts of trust on a weekly basis? That is very important to accept this fact that on a weekly basis God wants you to rest. He trusts you. Are you making good on His trust? Rest is the pleasure of His trust. It is time to make good on God's trust by experiencing the Sabbath principle for His sake and pleasure. Yes, indeed, God takes pleasure in our rest, for Sabbath rest is the pleasure of His trust. So take time to write about a time you trusted God to provide for your needs. Or maybe you remember a time you did not trust God to provide and you were anxious, and you worked, you overworked, and became very exhausted and tired. And perhaps you made mistakes because you continued to trust your own abilities and not rest in God's ability, and one who said, I give you rest. Describe using your own personal examples how trust and rest are connected to each other. How when you come to a relaxed point of trust in God, you then can rest. Unless we have trust that pleases God, we perhaps will never rest. It comes to trusting. Trust God. He loves you. He cares for you. He provides for the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and He provides for you. Enough so you can have that time that you don't think you can take. You can have that time with Him in holy rest. Rest, the pleasure of his trust. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.